the next case uh, is the concept of the inverse demand now what do we mean by this if you recall from the chapter 5 discussions and at the outset of this video we had discussed that to simplify our understanding in terms of the demand analysis we take the help of mathematical and the functional form representation uh, which which we have denoted that demand as a function of uh, prices which which is essentially p1 and p2 in our case which we have been discussing and income and income which we have been denoting with m right so demand as a function of these factors has been explained now what the inverse demand function tells us is that say for example we rewrite this function in a way that it's basically explaining a price as a function price as a function of demand if we shift to this kind of representation this is what is called as inverse demand function right so what do we essentially do is say for example we have a function demand of for x is a function of px py and m or demand is equal to px plus py plus m for two commodities x and y in x and y plane what we try to do we can rewrite the expression as p is equal to m upon demand for x plus y that is price as a function of quantity now you can observe in this figure what we essentially are trying to do is that you are saying that as your price is changing for price of commodity 1 corresponding to commodity 1 as the price increase uh, decreases say for example it was initially here okay and corresponding to it the demand was somewhere here let us assume okay demand was somewhere here and the price fell to some point uh, let's say this is p1 prime then it fell to p1 double prime and corresponding to it the demand was somewhere here because when the good became cheaper obviously you will demand more so it makes sense right if you observe the plot more of x1 is being demanded here it's x1 prime x uh, x1 naught now further if we decrease the price to p1 triple prime what happens is that we get another point like r where again the x1 demanded is furthermore right so this is basically the notion of inverse demand function initially the demand function representation was in a way that you were having price on this axis and your commodity consumed on this axis it can be x1 or x2 uh, it can be p1 or p2 right so we were explaining it in the, the uh, these terms right as your price was increasing right as your price uh, was increasing your demand for uh, demand for x goes down right it was something like this right but now what we are trying to essentially uh, focus on is that under inverse demand function it's simply that price as a function of quantity is being represented it's not like here it was a quantity as a function of price right this is y axis and this is your x axis and here what we are doing is price as a function of quantity where your quantity is on the x axis and your price uh, is on the y axis y as a function of x uh, right so this is uh, how how the representation is other things i mean um, it, it it has the same meaning but it makes our uh, interpretation and analysis easier which we will be getting to know in the subsequent chapters when we get into the application parts so to summarize this chapter the consumer demand function which we have been discussing so far so uh, for a good a particular demand function in general depends on the prices of the good and the income that is demand is a function of price and income assuming other things remain constant the other factors which can drive a demand for a particular commodity or a good a normal good is the one for which the demand increases when the income increases an inferior good is the one for which the demand decreases when the income decreases an ordinary good is the one for which the demand decreases when its price increases a griffin good is the one for which the demand increases when its price increases 
Now, if the demand for good one increases, when the price of good two increases, okay, prices of both the commodities are going up. I mean, the price of, I mean, the demand for good one is going up because the price of good two has increased, okay. Then good one is called substitute for good two. And if the demand for good one, demand for good one decreases in this situation, when the price of good two is increasing, then it's a complement for good two. Now, in case of inverse demand function, it's basically measures the price at which a given quantity will be demanded, right? Now, we are giving a representation. I mean, there's a representational change here where we are representing price as a function of quantity. Okay, this is quantity price as a function of quantity. The height of the demand curve at a given level of consumption height of the demand curve at a given level of consumption basically measures the marginal willingness to pay for additional for additional unit of good at that consumption level say for example this is x naught prime consumption level so this height basically the, the price corresponding price say for example so this is basically telling us that uh, the marginal willingness to pay for each additional unit if we get the slow for this right uh, i mean the difference between two points so this is about uh, this chapter that is the demand so thank you for your patient listening in the next chapter we will be taking up the concept of revealed preference if you like the content of these videos please support our channel by subscribing to our content and follow us on social media platforms thank you